morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I don't know if I like these morning streams or not, but it gets me going. It gets me done. <laughs> and then there's a lot that I can do during the day. And we are to have a beautiful fall day today and rain for like the next couple days. So I need my afternoon to go outside. Um, one thing we're going to take care of today is get the walnut dye strained out and put it to my dye pots and get ready for me to do dyeing over the next couple days with the dye pots. There are two ways that I dye with black walnuts. First way is I pick up the black walnuts, cover them with water, let them sit on the porch really until the next summer right a long time and that's why I say we strain it because they fall apart but but you get a very intense dark brown color from that so uh, I once I get that strained out then I put that in a dye pot and my fiber goes into it directly um, don't need any kind of um, mordant right I don't use any kind of mordant but you do need to wet your fiber ahead of time and so I, I get it good and soaked and then bring while the dye pot is coming up to temp then I put it in there and let it sit um, with heat for a while and then I turn it off and let it sit overnight I probably could use the walnut dye any number of times. It's not very pleasant smelling. It's not really something I want sitting around. So, you know, there's really not a reason to keep it. The second thing that I keep is black walnuts that have not had any water on them. They're just a bucket full of black walnuts and with a lid on it so that they don't get wet. Now they do decompose and I do take those and put those into a dye pot and put the so there there is more risk of getting material on the fiber by doing it this way but I have discovered that using the actual hulls I get a redder cast I get a very pretty rust color um, that, that red brown color that I adore it just it's beautiful so it's something that I will try every time I can't be guaranteed anytime I die with natural dyes right I, I don't know for sure if it's gonna work or not but those are the two things that will probably happen over the next couple days I will stream on Friday afternoon because we have plans to go to a concert Friday evening um, that will be a little bit of a change, not much. And anyway, probably the other thing I have to do today is mow. We should be almost done, almost done with the mowing. And it is chilly this morning. It is such a fall day, such a early morning, um, cool, very, very cool outside, but sunny. I am going to do a little more spinning today of fiber that once again I found uh, cleaning out my drop spindle bag before I went to SAF and took my class about spinning cotton and in this particular case this was fiber that I had completed mostly I was spinning on the trindle but I took it off because I wanted to take the trindle for the cotton and it's a good thing I did because it was very, very good. And so I have two little bits to ply and then the fiber to finish. I have decided instead of drop spindling, which obviously I'm just not in the mood, I just am never in the mood to drop spindle. It's so rare for me to drop spindle that I want to get this fiber spun up. Once again, it is more merino silk bamboo. I bought a number of these dyed fibers um, when I went to Stitches and I also bought over the 
past years a lot. I have this marked as 16 wraps per inch. I truly believe it's a two-ply. I truly believe it's 12, um, maybe 13, because it's merino. And it's been washed and it's puffed, and that was a um, wraps per inch measurement before I washed it. I'm pretty unimpressed with wraps per inch gauge anymore. I just hardly really want that figure for use as far as I, it just really isn't giving me any information different from a lot of my hand spun. I spin so consistently in the same range. Most of my hand spun is the same anyway. The fiber makes a huge difference and washing it makes a big difference. And the second thing is when you do wrap Oh, I have a spammer. When you do wrap your fiber around something like this, you pull tight. And your wraps per inch is not really accurate. So even if I took my two-ply and I wrapped it tight and laid it side by side, that just is not as accurate of a wraps per inch as what you really want to measure if you're going to judge if it's a DK or a worsted or a bulky or whatever. So let's see. I think I will block this person. Yeah, all right. It's trying to sell me followers, as always. It's interesting, though. The account was created November 13, 2019. That's a long time ago. For it not to have been banned up till now. I also have not seen this first-time chat from viewer. That is something that I'm getting, I'm pretty sure, as a moderator. All right, so anyway, I have this skein that... Post wash, I measured as 170 yards. This is a one yard skein, so I wrapped it, you know, 170 times around. That too is a little better information for me as far as planning on what I'm going to make with the different yarns. But the, uh, I still take it with a grain of salt, okay, because it will change after you wash it. There is absolutely no way to get your fiber washed without putting it in a skein or something contained first, right? So this is one of these things that you just can't avoid and you can go ahead and make your skein and as you're winding it up to get ready to use it, take your measurements. Take a loose wraps per inch, take a, uh, you know, take I, you can't really measure your yards while you're winding it into the ball. So you're going to have to take your measurement as either rescan it or take your measurement as a ballpark. And the last thing is do a swatch. I mean, ultimately that decides what you net with it anyway, right? Swatching is the most important part of working with any yard, but in particular, hand spun. So what, hang on. What I have to do today are these little bits. I'm going to apply them. These both came off of drop spindles. One was in the bag, the other one I just took off. Look about the same amount, but it doesn't really matter because if I have any left, I'll probably put it onto the bobbin that I'm going to start spinning with. I have this much fiber. I don't know. I have no idea what the weight is and then I'll be done. So I'm going to do it on the Roberta. I have decided that there should be pretty much, there should be the possibility of pretty much getting the same two-ply as I got with the drop spindle because of that really is related to how it drafts and it's going to draft the same way whether I'm on a spinning wheel. <coughs> Excuse me. Whether I'm on a spinning wheel or I'm on a drop spindle 
or you know whatever it's going to draft pretty much the same I was going to say an electric spinning wheel or a regular spinning wheel. My whole goal towards after I get this done is to start spinning the Pima cotton, which I have not had any luck spinning anywhere. I'm going to try it on the Roberta. It's my last attempt. And if I cannot get it to spin well where I would use the yarn, I'm going to find another home for it. Probably my daughter. She has pretty good luck with cotton. I don't. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. All right. I am going to go to my spinning wheel. There we go. Let's put a title under this. You noticed? Okay, so I have the same fiber blend that I spun a couple months ago. That was a green color. You'll notice that that happens often in the spinning community. Uh, the dyers are going to buy big bumps of the same fiber. Because one thing they want to have quantity to sell to multiple people. They don't want to make just eight ounces of one dye color. Uh, very few of them do anyway. We do that ourselves personally, but not somebody who is in the business of making money from what they die. So they're buying great big pounds of the same fiber base. And that's why you end up with Merino Silk Bamboo Blend in variety of colors, maybe even variety of dyers, right, from different dyer sources. I have this listed on the tag that's on this skein as Zen Garden, uh, or yeah, as Lisa Sousa. Lisa Sousa, of course, is a more of a commercial dyer. It is smaller, but bigger than a lot of them. And it is listed as Zen. So I think that's the color, the colorway. But I have it listed as Lisa Sousa. I don't have any original um, tag with it, but I do know from looking it up on Ravelry that I bought it at Stitches sometime. And that would have been like 2009 or 10, somewhere in there. I forget exactly when I went, but that would have been the first time I went and I know I bought it at that time. I think I bought it from Dragonfly Fibers. Um, because I bought the trindle from them. And I think that I bought this from her at the same time when I bought the trindle. I bought both the green and this color. That's what my memory remembers anyway. It's close enough. It's close enough. How's the music? I can't hear the music for nothing. It drives me crazy. I know. Maybe just a notch or two more. I will try and keep speaking louder. By the way, one of the things I've been doing is knitting with the handspun acrylic, the yarn bee, and I have my face cloth almost done. It's so tempting to quit. I'm a little tired of the I mean, I have the pattern memorized now. I, for a while there, I couldn't even remember the pattern. It's so easy, but I was, I just, I was having some trouble with it. But I now I have the pattern memorized, and it, it's a really, really good TV knitting. I don't know if this is going to work or not. We will find out. They'll probably come. Nope. Oh, well, that might not be a bad idea. 
Let's see how that works. Let me cut some of this off. But there's a... I gotta do B before I can do A thing going on. I have... I have... I had decided quite a while ago when I first started knitting that face cloth that I would just knit off of the Knitty Knotty, the two yard skein Knitty Knotty, because the, let's see here, I'm already plying, so that's good. Because I didn't think it would take all that much fiber. I mean, all that much yarn. And good grief it does, because it's on size. It's on size four needles and it's a tight very very tight fabric so it is taking forever let's see how we do here not well all right that doesn't want to okay Yeah, I can see my problem. It's going to get caught underneath this. Let's try it. It's not going to do that. <clears throat> I may end up just putting these on the floor. Yeah, I think I'm going to just put these on the floor. <clears throat> handy I do have baskets all over the house but not right here right now so there is so little that I don't think it's gonna go anywhere important but it might get wrapped around the <laughs> it might get wrapped around the chair leg or the stand for the spinning wheel fortunately the cat is not in the room so the cat is very very angry at me today it I put uh, his monthly flea dose on the back of his neck. He he hates that. I mean, it's it's so much worse. How do you tell a cat? Oh, it's so much worse if we don't do this. But you know, no, you have to suffer through their uh, intolerance for a day or two before they forgive you. <laughs> so he's sulking. Glad you could join me this morning, Frecklecraft. It's early and a lot of people are working and a lot of people are just not up yet because of the time difference. I appreciate you're here. that fiber so I can put it on two bobbins. Oop! Caught. There we go. The thing about this two-ply is it does. It starts out really nice. And by the way, that skein I showed you was that was spun on drop spindle. I had been spinning it for a while. And that's why it was in the drop spindle bag, all packed up with the fiber and everything. But I just decided I want to go ahead and make another skein and have this yarn to use or whatever. It's early. It's my post school run relax time. Oh, working on a cow with some hand spun. So your, li your life sounded like a perfect background. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's good. 
Knitting sounds wonderful. The other thing I've been working on very hard since Sunday's stream is packaging up three fiber exchange packages. In other words, I have three exchange partners. I'll be getting fiber from them and I'm sending them fiber. We set this up through another streamer's stream. Some of us who are viewers of her stream uh, snoring cat fiber are doing a fiber exchange and I have been busy putting that together trying to figure out good packaging you know shipping is a real real concern and our timing was poor because the United States Post Office just upped their shipping rates um, first of October <laughs> So, unfortunately, they did that, of course, for the holidays. Of course. So, I've been figuring out how to get it into a priority box where it's one fee, no matter the weight. Fiber doesn't weigh much. I have found, though, it is most economical with the post office to use their priority box as opposed to pack it up. I don't trust large envelopes for the fiber like this. I really don't. I want a solid box. So anyway, plus there are other things that I'm going to put in, and I want to have plenty of room for that. So I'm working on it and got it figured out. And all I have to do is make a few more row logs and I'll have it done and then I gotta package it. It's, I feel very, very sorry for people who are trying to you know, everybody th says, oh, well, you know, don't have a store. You, you can just sell it on the Internet. But when I went to SAF this last weekend, you know, I told my husband, I said, just remember, everything I buy is at least 15% cheaper than buying it online because of shipping, at least. So... I feel sorry for people who are trying to make money online. Oh, I have a knot. Okay, well, we'll just spin that right in there. Fiber broke at some point while I was spinning. I can see why this got pretty thin. Oh, wait a minute. I seem to only have one single. Well, that can't be right. Yep, it broke. Oh, I wonder when that happened. Uh, all right, let's see if I can go back. Oh, right there, I think. Yep. Good. Not too far back. <laughs> yeah, I'll just go along plying and all of a sudden realize there's only one there. And yes, I do 
I don't try a spit join with something that has been spun probably a couple years ago. Uh-oh. Here we go. Right? Yeah. Two. Mostly because that twist, no matter where you untwist it or whatever, is so settled in when the fiber has sat that long. It's better just to do a knot. I have just learned that over the years and decided that I can put up with an occasional knot. If I'm knitting, I can stick it in the back or hide it or do whatever. Boy, these are going to come out really close. This is awesome. left. Hi, Chen Chen, how are you? Good morning to you too. doing real good. Thank you. I am looking forward to doing some dyeing tomorrow. <laughs> and that sounds weird. Hubby and I were at Saf and, no, Hubby and I were sitting on the porch, and I think I've told this on stream already, but we were sitting on the porch before we went to Saf, and he looked at me and he said, you know, when you get back from Saf, you're going to have to dye. <laughs> And I knew what he was talking about because we're sitting on the porch where the walnut, black walnuts are percolating, right, getting ready for the dye pot. And I knew exactly what he was talking about, but it did come out really funny. But anyway, we're going to take care of straining and pouring that off today. Oh, thank you for the host. Appreciate that. And um, next two days, when it's supposed to rain, I'm going to be doing the dye pots. I love this time of year. I just, I don't know. 
The only thing I don't love is the fact that it goes so fast and then all of a sudden there's just so much for Christmas. Okay. <clears throat> I'll have to figure out what kind of fiber I've got here. Oh, I should have brought my scale, but it's in with where I was working on packing up the fiber stuff, and it's not here. Oh well, I'll be guessing. I can tell. I'll just be guessing. <clears throat> bit here actually. Well, that's ugly looking. And idea. I'm probably not pulling this in half, but <clears throat> Spiber is very compacted. Oops. Yep. Well, that didn't work. So what I'm doing, <laughs> it's doing a wild guess by matching up different, you know, like, that looks like, sort of like, that would, okay. I'm just doing a wild guess on splitting it in half here. <clears throat> No idea if that's right or not. I would be much more sure, of course, if I had my scales, but that's okay. And yes, I'm going to pre-draft this because it is really compacted. It's 
It's got some shine to it from that both bamboo, silk and bamboo. You don't really see that once you get the yarn spun. Get that silk bamboo twisted into that twist and you lose some of that shine. <clears throat> Almost ready to spin here. Bobbin always has kind of a chunk, chunk, chunk sound because uh, once it gets a little more weight on it, then it gets quieter. But, and some are worse than others. This one isn't too bad. My aura has developed a really significant thumping sound as I treadle. And Hubby was walking by one day while I was spinning and he said what is that and I you know I, he started watching it and he says you know really I need to take that apart right here and look there is something loose right here and I said okay go for it so for the moment it's not taken apart yet but I'm not spinning on the I don't want to start anything on the Yara for a while so he gets that investigated One of his rainy day projects. It shouldn't really be too bad. A number of screws. The real problem is if something is actually broken. That's going to be a problem. I wouldn't know why. It has, t it has been toppled twice. It's a very heavy spinning wheel. And uh, not dropped, but run into you know so there is a possibility something broke all right this is going well I'm going to enjoy spinning this on here Still drafts pretty hard. Pretty hard. That might be <laughs> my fault for having it sitting in the bag rolled up like it's been. Once you get it opened up to a certain point, it drafts pretty good. Thank you. 
gonna stick all over me though. I also had to get out all my winter clothes. My winter clothes live in a great big... used to be a horse tack chest. And long, long, long time ago when I moved into this house and found it in the barn, brought it in and lined it with cedar. So it's a cedar chest. It's my cedar chest. And uh, twice a year I have to switch my clothes because an old house has very, very limited closet space. Uh, in fact, we have one small closet in the bedroom, three chests of drawers, and one big wardrobe armoire <laughs> in order to deal with <clears throat> all our clothes. But... Now I'm warm. I got my warm clothes out. I always make it a point if I haven't worn something for two seasons, it goes to Goodwill. Uh-oh, this is not good. It's not drafting. I'm gonna have a thick spot. There we go. I don't mean, I mean, I'll keep it through two summers, let's say for summer clothes, that kind of thing. Some things I just don't wear because they're for a different reason. I have two winter dresses for that reason. I don't get rid of those, but I may not wear them. I have a number of summer dresses. I hang on to those. Wear those on cruises a lot. So I'm really just talking about everyday clothes. All right. That goes well. I am happy with that. need to make notes of what I do in the stream because um, then I put it in the journal. It really helps me keep my records up to date as to what gets done when. So I'm just jotting some notes here.
I have been listening to one of the authors I really like that writes science fiction, Connie Willis, and a lot like Christmas. It's a series of stories that she has, Christmas stories that she has written over the years, and they put them together in a collection. I am loving it because it's got, you know, standard science fiction stuff. <laughs> visits from aliens and that robots I really have enjoyed it in fact unfortunately when I run into one I really like like that then I'm really I wish I had that book I uh, have Christmas books that I actually pack away I don't keep out and get them out and I'm thinking I need to get that box out now and start reading some of them. One of my problems is I wait until I get the Christmas decorations out and then it just is too busy. I'm not reading the Christmas stories because it's too busy. So I'm going to fix that. Get the books out. They're right in front of the Christmas closet anyway. Be easy to do. The box also has all the Christmas CDs, which I don't keep out. I was I noticed on Pretzel when I was looking for what kind of music to play today, they've got a new Oh, you know what? I don't think it's a Christmas channel. It's not a new Christmas channel. It I saw one of the Christmas artists. I don't know what they sound like, and it's too early yet. I'm not going to play it. I have decided not to play the spooky one. It's very appropriate for, for games and, and that sort of thing, but I just don't think that for a chat or whatever... It's the best background music. But I will definitely do Christmas. I think I played it one stream in July, just for the heck of it. You know, Christmas in July is a thing, right? My mailbox has been inundated with catalogs because I do shop online, but use the catalogs to get the ideas and whatever. And they know it. Of course, they, anytime you buy, they sell that as a prime mailing list, right? You get on the prime list. Um, and I have been getting bunches. And I've, I've been looking at them. I've seen some fun things. Not coming up with a whole lot of ideas yet as far as the two people that I still need to buy for. But <clears throat> anyway, I'm enjoying looking at them. However, I got, um, for the second year in a row, Amazon put out a catalog. And it's focused as a wish book for kids. It's got things for kids to do in it. It's got stick, you know, not stickers, but punch out things. And it, it's really cute. It's making me realize that Amazon is doing the traditional, like Sears catalog that the people in the era that I was a child would get every year, the wish book. And of course, I would go through that so much. Right? It's one of those generational, iconic things that are going to hit the antique stores in 60, 70 years. Right? And really, people are going to collect it.
You know, I'm not 100% sure whether this is top or roving. I think it's top. <clears throat> I don't think I marked that on the... I think it's roving. I don't think once they mix everything in like that, they can call it top. a whiff of vinegar but it's not this I am looking forward to after I get supper in the oven and we reach a nice warm temp outside I may have to put a jacket on but I am looking forward to some porch time uh, today I have half of a Shetland fleece that is washed but needs picked open before I probably comb it into top and it's not that I need to sit on the porch because, oh, a, a little bit of stuff might come out. I mean, it's washed, but there still can be vegetable matter in there, so. But it's more, it's just a very good place to sit when I'm doing that kind of stuff. Don't have to do anything as far as Halloween. We live so far out in the country, so far down a lane. We don't really do anything for Halloween. This color reminds me of copper. When you see it uh, catching the light, it really does. It reminds me of copper. I would have named it copper, even though it's not that gold color.
me today. Everything's greenish color. Boy, this is so nice to spin. I am sitting here just loving this spin. I never get tired of it. Really, I just never get tired of it. Hubby making rattling noises. <laughs> it's amazing what you hear when you're streaming. Like you probably would, I, you know, I'd ignore more likely normally.
the truth is the bulk of getting the dye liquor the black walnut dye poured off and all that has fallen to him as a task oh i need a break stretch break um the buckets are heavy the walnuts are even heavier a walnut filled bucket with water is just immensely heavy so he has pretty much mandated that that's his job and I'm perfectly willing to let him have that job and I think that was some of the rattling I am so looking forward to my Christmas present. I did a fiber advent calendar. That's my Christmas present this year. Plus, the fibers that I pulled to put together for the fiber exchange are going to be little bits and bobs leftovers. Some of them not all of them some of them and i will have the fibers i get from my three exchange partners so i'm gonna have a lot of fun things to spin or to open right to open on stream during the holiday I may, right in the middle of December, we go on a cruise. So I'm going to be gone 10 days. So I may wait. I might do one of them before we go on a cruise. And then the rest, and especially my advent calendar, I may just continue afterwards. The advent calendar has uh, 24 days, though. So... We'll have a lot. I could do that one two each day before and after the cruise. That's a that's an idea. That would be fun.
definitely roving. <laughs> the way it splits. <laughs> it always looks like it's going to split nice and even right down the middle, and it never does. It just gets all wonky. It's always like it's folded over on itself. See that? I don't know if you can see that. That's what it looks like. Like it's folded over on itself. Alright, well that didn't split really even, but it's better than it was. Oh my goodness. Definitely we'll get this first half done. I have to decide whether I'm going to cut the stream short, which I'm tempted to do, but maybe I'll be good and start the other bobbin. The more I get done today right now, the further along I'm going to be. As is always the truth.
hate it when I run out of things to talk about because then I sit here and think about all the things I gotta do. Makes me impatient. I just got my keyboard. Nothing serious. Which way do you want to go? You want to go that way.
last bit for this bobbin. Last bit for the bobbin. I love alliterations. I know something I gotta do right as soon as I finish this. I was messing with the, uh, oops, the um, nano spinner, trying to spin cotton. On Sunday, not doing well at all, so I'm not gonna do that. And I had the drive bands pulled down pretty tight, get a lot of pull in, so I gotta loosen those. I don't want to stretch them. I'm not using it. twists in the end. It just feels like it unravels no matter what you do. But that's a little better. Well, before I mess with the fiber, let's get another bobbin on here. Okay. I don't know if you can see this. there. See that? That is my drive band holding on by a few rubber threads. <laughs> Seriously, it has split to the point where it's gonna go. Oh, it's gonna go. to close the stream since there's really nobody chatting or visiting right now and I do have other 
drive bands, I'm just gonna go ahead and replace that before I have a disaster while I'm spinning. Not a real disaster, but it, it pops when you least expect it, right? This is, this is the drive band, and right there, oops, it's not very focused, you can't see it very well. See, when there's no tension on it, it don't matter. But, well, I'm just not going to be able to show you. Anyway, definitely at a breaking point just within a few fibers holding it together and I'm talking rubber it is rubber but still okay all right sorry about that I cannot spin without getting fluff it's not in my nose it's on top like that you know or it's my hair <laughs> one of the two so I will be back on Friday afternoon and I think I'm planning on maybe one to three I haven't really decided I don't want to make it too late because I want to give us time I'm not sure what time we have to leave the house uh, we will have to eat I think we're gonna eat ahead of time so I think I will make it as early as one o'clock and it's only for this week and then I'm back on Sunday at my normal time three o'clock so I will count on seeing you all then thank you for stopping by especially those of you who stop by later and watch the video on demand I appreciate it and I will talk to you all later bye